Hi everybody. Uh, today is your 14th week of online classes. Uh, today we're going to look at the uh, practice written test. Okay. Uh, your usual uh, instructor is not here today, so I will uh, instruct you on how to do the written test. Okay, which should be next week okay um, so in the written so the written test uh, again will be next week this week you're given two homework assignments uh, the homework assignments uh, you're going to print and you're going to fill out on your own okay when you have finished the uh, filling out the test, uh, then you should listen to this lecture. Okay, so do the homework assignment first, then then listen to this lecture. Okay, throughout this lecture, you will uh, see many different ways to do the test. There might be more than one answer. Importance is not so much to get the right answer. Uh, the importance is to get a correct answer and to understand understand why. Okay. Um, well, so let's go through the test. Okay. Um, maybe before you do the test, uh, I'll just explain how it is done, and we can. Uh, get an idea of the different um, procedures in doing the activity. Okay. So for uh, English 1, there are five parts to the test. There are five parts. Uh, the first one says here, read the questions carefully and circle the best answer. So you're given a, uh, a question or maybe a, a statement and you're given four choices. Okay? So this is a standard multiple choice style of exam. Okay? So for today's test, we just got two questions. It will be uh, a good opportunity to practice that. In the second part, you are going to uh, change uh, a sentence. Okay. So in part two, you're given sentences, uh, and each sentence has a mistake. Okay, so you have to find uh, the mistake and make the correction. Okay. So for number three, well, for any of these sentences, uh, there might be a mistake, and you're going to either add a word, okay, or you're going to remove a word. Okay, so kind of addition, uh, subtraction. And this one, you're just going to change a word. Okay, so I don't know what type of correction. You have to read the sentence. You have to figure out what is wrong, and you have to make the correction. But again, key, one word. Do not add two words or remove two words or change two words or add one word and change another word. Okay, that would not be correct. So you must you must uh, read the sentence, identify the error, and make the change. Again, one word. Part three: put the words in order to form a correct sentence. This is a classic structure evaluation. So. Uh, in the three questions in today's practice test, uh, right, so you're given a, a number of words. You have to arrange them in the correct order. Okay. Now, sometimes you will see something like this, two words together, and uh, so you can write them together. So I don't know where uh, this comes in the correct sentence. Uh, if it's at the beginning or the middle 
or the end, but these two words are together, okay? And remember to include the punctuation included here, okay? So again, put the words in the correct order. All right. Um, <clears throat> All right, and this is in uh, the second homework uh, uh, paper. Uh, we're going to go into some uh, some longer answers. In part four, you're going to write a question. In part five, you're going to write an answer. Okay. So again, you're given these answers. From them, you can figure out an answer. Sorry, you can figure out a question. Okay. You're given the information they received what information did they ask for, okay? So today we're gonna to look at three answers. You will write uh, three questions. In part five, it's the other way around. You are going to read these, uh, read these questions. You will write an answer. For the practice test, um, the subject is you, okay? So you can give your own answers. Uh, I don't know if this is on the uh, final writing test. None of these questions are on the final writing test, but the same style of questions will be on the uh, test. So when you, if you do this practice test, you will have a good uh, preparation for the uh, for the written test next week. Okay. Again, these questions are not on the test, but the same style, the same kind of uh, questions are there. Okay. All right, let's go to the beginning. We're going to look at uh, part one. We'll start from there. All right, now as I said, <clears throat> the first part you will see on the written test is a section where you will uh, read a question or a statement and you will answer using the uh, best of uh, four possible answers. Okay. Uh, if you haven't already tried these answers, maybe pause the lecture and you can uh, try to answer these on your own. I will go over the correct answers right now. Okay. So if you want to pause, pause right now. All right, let's look at the first question. Uh, the first question comes from unit five. Are these your glasses? Okay, so we're looking at possessives. Um, okay. And in fact, maybe we're more looking at plurals. So are these your glasses? Okay. Uh, are they mine? Um, we'll have to find out. Okay. So it's just a basic, uh, look at the B verb right here. Now in all of the answers, you can see the B verb. Okay. So that's the first class the first word of the question. So are these? Okay. So the B verb is going to be answered. It's like if you have a, a yes or no question, and these are obviously all yes or no uh, answers. So this is a yes or no question. Uh, you usually begin with a verb. Um, and uh, so if this is the, the question begins with do, uh, we'd have a, a do or don't in the answer. Okay. If it's a have, you'd have have in the answer. Okay. Or any other modal, uh, you would answer that. Okay, so are these your glasses? Uh, we have yes and no answers. Uh, those are all possible. What's the subject? Your glasses. So they belong to you. Okay, so um, okay, so certainly talking about I would be incorrect. Okay, in fact, the the subject would be the glasses. So it's a, a an, an object and it's plural. Okay. Uh, so quite simply, the answer is D. Okay. So no, they aren't. Okay. Uh, 
C would be the correct answer if this was not plural. Okay, so <laughs> is this your glass? No, it isn't. Or yes, it is. Okay, so that would be a singular. That would be it. Okay. Okay. Uh, B is incorrect. Are you glasses? Okay, no. Certainly, you are not glasses. Okay, but you may have glasses. Okay, and if you have glasses, uh, I'm asking if the glasses you have are these glasses, the glasses I'm holding, the, these glasses. Um, so they could have asked, are these glasses yours? Okay, that could be another answer. Anyway, number one, the answer is D. Okay, no, they aren't. Uh, number two, my sister is blank lunch right now. Okay, so we have two different styles of questions that you may see on your uh, writing test. <clears throat> one is a straight question and answer, and this one you're given multiple choices of missing uh, words or phrases. Okay, so we know the uh, verb. Okay, so the verb that's missing is eat. Okay, so my sister is lunch right now. Okay. Uh, you could use the verb have, but of course that's not a choice here. You're given four choices, eat, eating, eaten, and ate. Okay. Now uh, a clue is right here with the word right now. Okay. So it's something that's happening right now. So this is something from unit two, okay. oh, sorry, unit four, unit four in English one. Okay. And in unit four, uh, what did we study? Correct. Okay. We studied the uh, present uh, continuous tense, or the, pre the present progressive, as your textbook calls it. Okay. Uh, so the answer for number two, B. My sister is eating lunch right now. Okay. So often, when you have something that's happening, happening right now, okay. Uh, we would use the ing form, and we'd also use the be verb before that. So you'd have some kind of be uh, plus uh, the verb, and then put an ing on the bottom of it. Okay. So my sister is eating lunch right now. Okay. Yeah, so that's something happening right now. Uh, the past participle. Uh, my sister has eaten lunch, and my sister ate lunch. You wouldn't have is in the past tense. That wouldn't make any sense. Okay. And uh, the present tense be verb and another present tense verb, I don't think we do that. Okay. My sister is eating lunch right now. Okay. All right, let's move down to part two. Okay. So most students do very well on the multiple choice. Um, we're going to go down to part two, and uh, we're going to look at these sentences. Okay. Now, as I said in the explanation at the beginning, uh, you're going to um, you're going to add, change, or delete one word to make each sentence correct. Okay. Now, in your instructions, it says uh, to <laughs> to write it again, to write the sentence out again. If you want, I think most professors are okay with just making the changes, okay, as you see them. As you, you don't have to write them out, and uh, as long as your corrections are very clear, um, that should be good. Okay. Now, corrections should be clear, uh, especially number three. I think the error is very clear. Look at number three. Is there are towels in the bathroom? Okay, so we're asking a question. Okay. Um, in fact, if it was a sentence, we could probably get rid of the is, and then you'd have there are towels in the bathroom. That would be a good sentence. Um, but this is a question, so you have to have the correct uh, subject and verb uh, structure. So the verb uh, will go first. Okay. Okay, 
this is what your sheet should look like. Okay, so sorry about that. Um, so the answer, right. Are there towels in the bathroom? Okay. It's not, is there are towels? It should be, are there is towels? Okay. So the answer, are there towels in the bathroom? This is from unit three. Okay. And we were talking about yes and no questions and uh, parts of the house. So are there towels in the bedroom? So this is an example of delete. So you remove that from the uh, sentence and that should be fine. Okay. Before, there would have been too many words to change. Remember, it's just change one word uh, and you would have had to change two. Okay. All right, number four. Uh, Sarah likes visit her family at Christmas. Uh, let's take that one a bit later. Number five. Uh, Stefano is Italian and is Milan. Okay. Now, um, I guess there's several ways you could say that. You could say he is Milanese. All right. You could simply say that he is from uh, the city of Milan, uh, but I think we can do better than that. What we're going to look at, uh, Stefano is Italian and is Milan. Milan, of course, is the city in northern Italy, okay? famous for uh, its artwork, uh, fashion, and football. And uh, so what you're going to do here, as I said before, even though it asks you to rewrite the sentence, you can just simply make the correction here, okay? And there's a word missing here. Uh, so Stefano is Italian and, right, it's probably be, and is Milanese. You wouldn't need two verbs. You can just simply write the word in here, the missing word, okay? So number five is from unit four, sorry, unit one. And you're probably uh, familiar with that kind of uh, structure, okay? Talking about where people are from, okay? okay. So again, in unit one, we studied where people are from. Stefano is Italian. He is from Italy, okay? He is from Milan. Okay. So that'll probably be the best answer um, if you can think of another one, that's fine, but you'd have to change, delete, or add. In this case, we're adding. Okay, so you add an extra word that is missing. Uh, number six, um, number six, let's look at number six right here. Uh, I lived in Australia, but I didn't live in Sydney. Okay. All right. All right. So I lived in Australia, the country of Australia. So we're some, talking about something that happened in the past. Okay. Now, referring to the time that the person lived in Australia, that person uh, didn't live in Sydney. Okay. So while they were residing, living in Australia, they weren't living in the largest city. They were living somewhere else. Uh, maybe Victoria, uh, Queensland, uh, Northern Territory, I don't know, but not in Sydney. Okay. Uh, and we know what happened to the past tense. Okay, we can see it here. Uh, we can see it here. We can also see it here. Okay, so every verb and every auxiliary verb is using the past tense, okay? Uh, so again, so this one, you're gonna have to change something. Okay, it looks like you got enough words. In fact, you have all the right words, just one of them is in the wrong form and has to change. So I lived in Australia, so some good structure, but not in Sydney, okay? So you have to say what he didn't do. Now, uh, so I think we can see it here, didn't live, uh, didn't lived. So 
in a, a negative statement, okay, we're talking about the present tense or the past tense, uh, you would have to make sure that uh, the auxiliary verb got the past tense, while the uh, pre well, the, the actual verb itself is uh, it remains in the present tense. Okay, so this would have to change. I'll make that a bit clearer. So what you can do is you can cross it out, and then you can write the correct word just below. Okay, so I didn't live in Sydney. Okay, so is this the past tense? Okay, it looks like the present tense, but Okay, so we went over three different types of changes. There's well, different corrections. There's change. Um, I should say there is a, a delete. Okay, so you're going to delete that. Uh, you can add something. I keep writing these out. Okay, you could add that in. So that would be adding a word that is not there. And with change, you're doing both. You're deleting the bad word and adding the correct word. So that's kind of in a, uh, two different um, corrections. But it involves one word. So you add from, you change lived to live, and you remove is. You're, you're removing one word, you're adding one word, you're changing one word. Okay, So it's always one word. Okay. Number four, um, you might get encounter something like this in your test. Sarah likes visit her family at Christmas. Okay, uh, so maybe what I'll do is I'll just write the sentences in here. Um, just to show you two correct sentences. So for here, um, what you could do is you could simply correct it like this. Uh, Sarah likes, so you could add a word. Okay, so Sarah likes to visit her family at Christmas. All right, that would be fine. Okay, or uh, another way is you could change the word and you could change this word. Okay, Sarah likes visiting. Okay, so I don't know what correction you want to make. You could just add a word uh, here, here. If you could add a word here, Sarah likes to, okay, visit her fa her family. Or if you want to do it differently, you could just cross this out and write the correct form of the word, and that would be. There, you can read my writing. Visiting, <laughs> okay, good, perfect. Sarah likes visiting her family at Christmas. So you can just write that in. Now, I keep saying this. It says rewrite the sentence, but if you if you don't, this is maybe better, easier, and your professor will be happier. Okay, if you do it like this, this is good. This is okay. Uh, just a very simple, easy correction. Okay. All right, so that's part two. I think you got the idea. Look for the correction, change it, and again, one word. Okay, good. All right, let's move down to part three. Okay, so part three, uh, as I said, you're going to put the words in order, all right, um, to form a correct sentence. So when you do this, you're going to have to, uh, it looks like a bunch of words. It is a bunch of words. Note the, uh, what kind of question it is, because that will tell you what kind of structure that you have. Uh, and then you can start putting words together. Right away, I noticed two words here. Here's a day of the week with on. I think those are going to go together. Okay, so on Tuesday. Uh, Okay, I see a place and a verb. I think these two words are going to go there too. I think they're going to go right here. Okay. Okay, and that leaves two words. Did she? Okay. 
So, um, so what I've done is I've, I've put these into groups and okay, so don't, you can do this on the test, but what you should do is take the words and rewrite them here. Okay. So what did we figure out here on Tuesday? Good. So those two words go together. Uh, we also figured out what other groups of words. Can't remember. To the bank. All right. In fact, we thought it was go to the bank. So we'd go bank. We put to the in the middle. Okay. So go to the bank. Okay. So we have a verb. Okay. And an action there. Go to the bank. We'll probably need a subject. We have two words left. She and did. Okay. Uh, she go to the bank. Uh, something's wrong. Okay. Uh, all right. There we go. Here's the question. Okay. So we know the question mark uh, will go somewhere. So I think the did will go here. Did she go to the bank? Okay. So that's the, so we have the question. Did she go to the bank? So on Tuesday, let go first. On Tuesday, did she go to the bank? Okay. Did she go to the bank on Tuesday? Uh, I'm going to put that over here. Okay. I think that's what we studied in Unit 9 when we studied the past tense. Okay. Good. Now, if you want to put it, um, if you want to put on Tuesday at the beginning, that's fine with me. I think uh, this would be a bit more common. One more thing, make sure you use a capital letter. Okay, so in each of these uh, sentences, there's uh, no capital letter except for the proper nouns. So did she go to the bank on Tuesday? All right, so find out this is the first word. Just rewrite it, but put a capital letter. Okay, good. And make sure again, Put the punctuation so it looks like a nice sentence. Okay, as we talked about before, right, the past tense, the auxiliary gets the past tense and the verb is the same. It's separated by the subject. Did she go to the bank on Tuesday? Okay, uh, that concludes lecture one. Let's continue with uh, lecture two. Okay, so I'll see you in the next lecture. We'll review our questions eight and nine, and then go on to the second piece of homework. Okay, I'll see.